Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday, everybody. How's, how's everybody doing? Is everyone having a good night so far? Good week? Man, it's hard to believe it's already Tuesday. It's crazy. There's a lot of wind and coldness outside here. Well, how is the weather anywhere, anywhere else? Is it cold, windy? I know Aussie ladies are feeling the heat right now down there in the summertime. I'm kind of jealous of that. I was really wanting spring and summer today. <laughs> oh man. So today we are going to be talking about listening to our body and a little bit of breaking up, breaking some of it down and how to, how to manage it a little bit better. And also for a lot of us, nice type A personalities, go getters, um, how to go from the failures to the huge motivations to the extreme lack of motivation and just kind of dealing with some stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about my, my history within some of this and kind of how that spurs a little bit of this group even. And then also some of the techniques that, that I've used in some of the training to get back to, to doing more and to be able to listen to my body. Has anybody in here that's listening to this live, do y'all have trouble listening to your body? And is it due to pain? Is it due to um, some chronic issues that you have? Is it due to just not being in the best shape and just trying to get back into it? Or that you've never really been able to exercise how you, how you need to to support your body? And a lot of this is, it encompasses all of it. So if you're on here live, I'd love to love that you're here. And then I'd also love if you would like to share why you are having issues with listening to your body, I would, I would love for you to share. So and hopefully you'll get something from this that'll help you on the trail or just in life in general, because this kind of plays a big role within it. So I was going through, I played soccer in college and in the midst of that, I started having some, some issues with my ankles. I had chronic sprains and then I got this really terrible stomach condition. Um, they never technically diagnosed it, but it completely destroyed me. I couldn't drink water for about two and a half months. And this was on basically leaving on like simple carbohydrates because that's the only thing I could ingest. And this is going from like a, a D1 collegiate athlete to I can't stand up from the couch. Um, I, oh, every time I stood up from the couch, I thought I was going to pass out. I had to like leave class. This was engineering school. I had to leave class and go throw up because my stomach wouldn't process it. And everybody thought that I was bulimic, that I had an eating disorder. I'm like, I'm gaining weight from eating my sugar cookies. Don't think I have a stomach. I don't think I have an eating disorder. I just throw everything up and I'd really like them to figure out what the hell is wrong with me. And so going through all that, I started finally to be able to drink water again. Uh, not much thanks to the doctors within that realm. They just thought that I needed anxiety meds. I was like, no, I, I don't need anxiety meds. I need some help with figuring out what the hell is wrong with me. Because pretty sure anybody would have a little anxiety if they can't drink water right now. And if they can't consume everyday items, the only protein I was able to get was eggs. And I could drink some, like a couple sips of boost at a time. And so as I was going through this, listening to my body was something that I, one, I had never really done before. And I really had to pay attention because if I got too fatigued, then I would be extremely wiped out for the next couple days. And it's not like I could get the proper nutrition and or even stay hydrated. I got a stomach bug in all of this too. It was like insult to injury, landed me in the hospital after my mom. <laughs> I went down to have this one test done in Nashville because I was living in Tennessee at the time. And my mom met me down there and she literally circled the hospital. I think she told me it was 12 times before I agreed to go to the ER. <laughs> um, needless to say, my resting heart rate was about 140 and I was extremely dehydrated from that. So they hospitalized me for a night and got some IV fluids in me. And so I was a little bit better off after that. But all of this is that when it comes to certain times, listening to our body becomes very critical. It becomes very key. And if we don't 
pay attention to some of those signs, then we can actually set ourselves back. Now, this is an extreme example, and I have recovered fully from that stomach illness and had many other things along the way. I'm also hypermobile. I have some issues within taking care of my joints, and I was diagnosed with chronic pain in my early 20s as well. I didn't know how to care for myself. I was trying to come back from the stomach illness and just destroying myself at the gym. I didn't I didn't know how to train. I didn't know how to actually go to the gym and not do everything. <laughs> I didn't know how to gauge if I was getting tired or not. And so I'd go to the gym and I would just destroy myself. I wouldn't be able to really walk very well for the next couple days. I would be so extre extremely sore. And it, it really was a huge wreck and havoc on my body. It wasn't the right way for me to train with my body type, my body structure, and at the fitness that I was at. I needed to take it slower, but I didn't know how. And I didn't understand how to listen to my body. And so one of the things that I want to bring up in this talk is breaking things down, making sure that you don't, as you're going in and as you're going through it in any of this, it's that you, if you don't understand how to listen to your body, then take smaller, smaller chunks, take smaller bites. And so one way that they talk about eating and food and nutrition is that as you're eating like a big plate of food, be mindful of it. Take a, take a bite, be mindful of that. Take another bite, be mindful of that. Don't just kind of cram it all in at once. And you can kind of do the same thing for exercise is that if you go a little bit slower in some aspects, then you can be mindful of actually what's happening to your body. Am I getting too tired right now? Is this too much for my body? And what am I using? What am I actively engaging through all of this? Does this, does this correlate and relate to anybody? Even if you just say like, yes, anybody else got, have started to get back working out and just destroyed themselves? and ended up making themselves a lot worse because of it. I did it for years. Like I, I didn't understand. <laughs> and I didn't have anybody else to help me with understanding it. You know, it, it's, it's just, it goes so far within that, you know, of not understanding, not listening to our body, not gauging. And so something that you can can do within this is, is going slower in your exercises. When you go into the gym or when you go to the workout area and you have a plan, bite off like four, four exercises instead of 10 and do two rounds instead of three. See how your body tolerates that. Do it on a lesser level and you, and you slowly build up. I was under the mindset that I wanted to be fit yesterday. I wanted all of that improvement to happen just yesterday. Like I wanted to already be there. And so I thought more is always better. More is better, obviously. Well, when we think about nutrition, we think of things like more is not always better. We need to, we need to do the right things. Same thing. Like think about working. Oh, I'm going to work more. That's not always better. It's usually a balancing act, you know? We need a balance of life. We need a balance of structure. We need a balance of training too. You know, especially whenever we're getting back into things or when we have other physical ailments that, that we need to listen to. So there's several ladies that said yes, that they understand on a lot of these things. Um, Beck said she needs to slow down when she eats. <laughs> you have your teacher and it's hard for you on, on your lunch breaks. Joanne says yes. Rosa said, this is why I love your program. You learn to pace yourself. I love it, girl. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. Jen says she can relate. Dolores, Katie, Rosa. Um, Harmony said that she was just discussing this with her friend the other day. Rest days are so hard to take because of those of us that want to be active every day. It's so true. But a lot of times we, we need to, we need to allow ourselves that ability to overcome. Rest days are so important. They talk about it so much when it comes to balancing endurance activities, you know? One is that you actually get addicted to go doing something and that it's actually good if you mentally challenge yourself in a different way. Like, you know what I did on Sunday? I did a puzzle. It was awesome. 
my friend Olivia and I, we did a puzzle together and it was a great other use of my time. Yes, I did go for a hike that day as well, but I didn't do anything on Saturday. I was pretty much hibernating on Saturday because it was cold. Dolores says, with psoriatic, psoriatic arthritis, your body can handle a workout or two, and then the third can be too much, resulting in swelling, stiffness, and super fatigue. Yep, that's exactly right. It's such a balance for it. Set you back even days or weeks. All of these things are hard because we want to push ourselves. We want to get better. We set these expectations. We set these goals for ourselves that we want, as I said, yesterday. And so every time I would go into the gym, I would push and I would push hard. And I wouldn't think I was doing too much, but my body would tell me later that I was. And I didn't have a good system to, to look at, okay, well, I did this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this, and that probably was a little much. Let's cut those in half and see how I feel the next time. I just wanted, while I was there, I would get excited. And I would keep going and I wouldn't be like, at the end of it, I'd walk down the steps and be like, Ooh, I'm a little tired, you know? And so going into some of those other aspects, how you get to being fit is the balancing act. It's making sure your body recovers. It's doing your foam rolling, you know, it's pacing yourselves. There's a reason why base miles are important. There's a reason why intervals are important. It's the balancing act between them. It's also the reason why you have some mobility days, some stretching recovery days that are built into your, to your training calendar. You know, these help to modify and help you listen to your body. Another thing that affects definitely me is my goals that I want to have. You know, I want to be able to conquer these clients. I want to be able to ride my bike and feel good the entire time. And pushing myself to get some of those things can be good for my, for my like psyche. I, I need goals to look forward to. I need things to achieve, but if I'm putting so much stress on myself to achieve those, that's also not as good. Whenever we look at stress, stress can be a good thing that can motivate us, but stress can be a bad thing whenever it, it's used in a method that, that we put ourselves down that if we do end up listening to our body and we take a break on the side of the trail before we get to the top of the climb, before we get to the super max heart rate and feel like we need to sit down on the side of the trail, like we should, you should take a break before you get to that point. Sometimes we can beat ourselves up for it. Oh, I should just push a little bit farther. I could have made it. It could have been there. You know, one of those things is being easy on yourself. Like, no, this is when I'm supposed to stop. This is when I planned to stop. When my body said this, this is when I needed to stop so I could recover faster and actually ride farther in a better heart rate zone. But a lot of us don't, we don't keep that same mindset. Whenever we're out there, all of a sudden we're like, oh, I can just go a little farther. I can just go a little bit more. And pull myself a little bit more. I've been there. I've had to sit on the side of the trail and like catch my breath. And my husband's looking at me like, are you okay? And supporting me, but definitely doesn't want to see me like that. I don't like to see myself like that. You know, like as I was coming back into it, it's, it makes it hard, but you have to have the mindset and the plan that it's okay. And not just actually okay, but actually the right decision to do, you know? This is, this is why we need to make these decisions that support ourselves, that are actually listening to our body and that the no pain, no gain bullshit is thrown out the window. Yes, you can push yourself in certain aspects, but it has to be underneath certain context. Like you have certain time zones that you push yourself in and then you recover afterwards and you work up into those time zones. You, you let your body become more accustomed to it. You know, it's not that you just need to go out and start doing high intensity interval trainings that you need to do threshold trainings. A lot of times it's more sweet spot or base miles, getting out on your bike and seeing if you can go for a longer distance or doing more like normal exercises that you're used to, that you're comfortable to doing them more at a quick pace and then a rest. 
It's all about the slow build within it, but giving yourself the the clarity and the the clearance that you can stop and rest or when enough is enough. You know? Um, Tatiana says, it's hard to watch more advanced riders on Strava or on group rides and I push myself way beyond my limits. I think that's common for a lot of us. And I think one of the things that they always say, don't compare yourself. And yes, that's true, but it's also that you want to do better yourself, you know, or that you want to please other people that you don't want to be the last one in the group and that you feel like you're holding everybody else up when ride with people that are nice. <laughs> if they're not nice, then you don't need to ride with them or just communicate what type of ride you're going to have, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to do more of a chill ride today. I'm not going to push myself too far. I know I need to listen to my body. Communication is key for those things. And so as you're going through and getting into either strength training, as you are doing more, more rides out there that you're wanting to push yourself, breaking things down, taking a, taking a stop here and there, understanding that you can do a little mental check-in. Um, they, a lot of times in, especially for us athletes, we, and I, a lot of my one-on-one clients, we go over this. It's actually how to listen to your body, how to tell what you are using, what's going on. Because all of a sudden at the end of their workouts, they'd be like, oh man, my back really hurts. Oh man, my hips are really tight. Oh man, I really, really, I think I overdid it. It was a little bit too much, you know? All of those different elements play a role into it. And if you just take a step back, in the middle of it, actually assess what's happening to your body, then you can decide at that time whether it is good for you to continue or if it's not. Or if you know that you can't understand what's happening in those times, then you need to set a little bit more stringent schedule for yourself with either the workouts, doing like five workouts instead of five exercises instead of 10, or cutting some of your rides in half or keeping a lower heart rate zone as you're going through it, making yourself stop more on some of the climbs. If you need, if you get, are getting too fatigued and don't, and can't finish out the ride, you know, all of these things if you are with other people, communication, ride with people who care, you know, there's enough of us out there. We all care about each other. Ride with other people that care for you. It's really, really important. For as I said, communication is key. Even pick, um, pick who to ride with based on that and type of ride that you want. It's exactly right. Exactly right. And so as you're doing this, just remember that to be nice to yourself, as I thought that I needed to get back into shape yesterday. It's a journey. It's a lifestyle change. It's a, it's a journey that we should like, you know, like, yes, we want things. Yes. We don't feel good about ourselves at the moment, but as you go through it, then you'll start gaining gains. You'll start getting, getting some of your goals and that y'all that's priceless. When you start to feel stronger, when you start to feel better, that's whenever things start connecting in. And if you didn't have the struggle to begin with, if you didn't have that, that mental kick, that little bit of harshness, then how sweet would those goals actually be? So when you work, when you focus on something, then you realize how, how good it is when you get it. Every time I go past this one climb that I get, that I used to sit on the ground next to. And that is, I get, I get happy. I understand that it, what I've done to achieve that is my hard work's been paying off. You know, I have gone through some medical issues this month and I've had to, y'all, I didn't do a workout for probably mm, two and a half weeks, maybe more in January. I think it was maybe more. I went on a hike or two, but I, my body just couldn't tolerate it. You know, female issues just suck. Let's be honest. And so I needed to listen to my body. I got back out there with some friends, um, this past week. It was great. I felt really, really happy about it. And they were super supportive of me. That's what it needs to be. You know, I'll get back in into it. I'm going to get back stronger, you know, but 
there's certain things that that our body need we need to listen and we need to back off you know we don't need injuries we don't need overtaxing of our body we need to listen to it and support it we only get one all right y'all have a fantastic night and i hope this helps some of you all and one just not feel alone and then two helps give you guys a little bit of tools of how to manage it all right y'all have a fantastic night